Hello, my name is Don Payton, president of VectorVest Incorporated, and I'd like to welcome you to VectorVest Pro Graphics version 6.0. VectorVest Pro Graphics is a fast, smart, easy to use stock analysis and portfolio management software. VectorVest combines the power of fundamental valuation with the insight of technical analysis. VectorVest sorts, searches, and analyzes over 7,600 stocks each day for value, safety, and timing. VectorVest also gives a buy, sell, or hold recommendation on every stock every day. Finally, VectorVest uses a market timing system that has never failed to call a major up or downturn in the market. Over the course of the next hour, we're going to take you from 0 to 60 with VectorVest Pro Graphics, and we're going to do it with the, with the assistance of our Pro Graphics Quick Start Guide, which can be found in your trial package. The Quick Start Guide employs a six-step process to getting you started with VectorVest Pro Graphics. One, install the VectorVest Pro Graphics software. Two, download current data. Three, read the VectorVest views. Four, open Stock Viewer. Five, build a watch list of your stocks. And six, use the Unisearch tool to find the perfect stocks for you. To get started with VectorVest Pro Graphics, First, install your software. Take the CD-ROM included in your trial package, place it into your CD-ROM drive, close the drawer, and setup will begin automatically. The next step in getting started with VectorVest Pro Graphics is to download current data. VectorVest is an end-of-day stock market service, so data is available each day by, by 8 p.m. Eastern Time Monday through Thursday and by about 11 p.m. Eastern Time on Friday. To download your data is very simple. You will notice at the top of your screen is a download menu. By default, your program is set up to download data through the Internet. If this is the way you would like to download your data, and this is the way that we recommend, just make sure you are connected to the internet, click the download menu, and then next click the download data link under the download menu. Once you've done that, downloading will start automatically and will download up to 10 days at a time of data. The next step in getting started with VectorVest Pro Graphics is to read the VectorVest Views. The VectorVest Views is a daily newsletter included within VectorVest Pro Graphics. To access the views from the VectorVest homepage, just take your mouse to the last button on the VectorVest navigation toolbar which says Views. Then just click that button. A window will open bringing up the current VectorVest Views. As you can see, the most current VectorVest views on this computer is as of Friday, September 13, 2002. And let's just start from the top left. First you see a date. If you click this down arrow, you'll get a calendar. And you can see any VectorVest views for as long as your database goes back. It automatically opens up to the most current date of data. But if I wanted to go back and look at, for example, the VectorVest views a week ago on the 6th, I can just click that icon and I can see the VectorVest views a week ago. And I could use the same technique to look at the VectorVest views two, three, four, even five years ago. Let's bring it back to the 13th. Next to the right is the view menu. Just click the, the drop down arrow and you will see that there are several sections contained within the VectorVest view. First is all and that just brings up the entire VectorVest views in one long document. This only applies to Fridays as on Monday through f Thursday the VectorVest views is just the timing market timing summary section. But if I would like to see for example the overview I could click there or if I would like to see the market timing section I can click and now I'm at the market timing section. 
as of Friday, September 13th. But let's start back with at the top. So let's click the View menu, scroll up, and let's start with the Overview. The Overview section is a market overview written by the founder and chairman of VectorVest Incorporated, Dr. Bart Delito. And let's just go top to bottom. First in the Overview, you see important VectorVest contact information, phone numbers and email addresses to people within the organization that you can contact for help. For example, sales, seminars, technical support, new stock requests, administration. Further down the list, we always give you the next several coming events. If you'd like to learn more about VectorVest Pro Graphics, you could attend one of our executive premier workshops or a two-day investment seminar, or we also have an options course available. After that starts the overview. On the 13th, Dr. Delito wrote an overview entitled The Early Move. The overview gives information current about current events and things that are happening in the world that affect the market. Let's take a look at the next section. The next section is valuation. Every Friday, the VectorVest Views tells you four very important things. And the first thing it tells you is whether the market as a whole is over or undervalued. And that is what the valuation section does for you. The valuation section shows you whether the Dow Jones Industrial Average is above or below the, va the VectorVest valuation of the Dow. It also shows the VectorVest composite price, which is the average price of all the stocks in our database, ranked against its value. And it gives you a basic indication as to whether the, the market is over or undervalued. And you can also look back into several weeks back and find out what the trend is. The next thing that the VectorVest views tell you, tells you is whether the market is going up or down. And to access this information, we go to the next section, which is timing. The timing section shows you an analysis first on the VectorVest composite, which again is the average of all the stocks in our database. Next, the relative timing of the VectorVest composite. The buy-sell ratio is a ratio of stocks ranked to buy by VectorVest against stocks ranked to sell by VectorVest in the, in the database. So if the buy-sell ratio is above one, that means there are more stocks in the database ranked to buy than a sell. If it's below one, there are more stocks ranked to sell. The next thing we analyze is the MTI, or Market Timing Indicator. The MTI is, is the main market timing indicator for VectorVest. If it's above one, it signals that the market is in an uptrend. If it's below one, it signal, signals that the market is in a downtrend. These indicators all tie together to form the VectorVest market timing system. You will also see a summary. For example, in this summary it says with three yellow lights, the caution light is on and the color guard is neutral. Since the price of the VectorVest composite moved down on a down lower on a week to week basis and the MTI is below one, we have a down down situation. And as we scroll down the page, we see the daily color guard analysis. This analysis is done every day and it gives you levels or shades of gray within the up and downturns in the market to give you an idea of what the market is likely to do. In this case, you see a lot of yellow, so it tells you that the market is likely in a transitional phase, transitioning from up to down or down to up. The next thing that VectorVest tells you is whether or not it's okay to buy stocks. And let's go to the next section. 
which is strategy. The strategy section tells you whether or not it's okay to buy stocks and it gives you a strategy to perform that is in tune with the market. For example, in the strategy for September 13, 2002, it starts, it says in the middle, prudent investors should continue to remain cautious and protect profits. Aggressive investors and trader, traders should play the market with a bias to the downside. For those of you who are riding the wave, we are short with worse stocks over $20. And finally, the strategy section gives you an actual strategy that you can use that's in tune with the current market. And you can see near the bottom, the strategy of the week is early down move. And as I scroll down, you can see that VectorVest gives you all the steps necessary to reproduce this strategy. So in recap, the VectorVest views tells you four things every Friday. First, whether the market is over or undervalued in the valuation section, whether the market is going up or down in the timing section, whether it is okay or not okay to buy stocks, and which strategies are best to use, both of which are in the strategy section. The next section in the VectorVest views is the climate section. The climate section provides information regarding interest rates, inflation, and other indicators. Let's scroll down so, we, so that we can see the table. And you can see that there, are, there is information regarding CPI and CRB inflation, 90-day T-bill and 10-year T-note, 10-year AAA corporate bonds, the S&P 500 index, the New York Exchange advanced decline, percentage bullish advisors, and the VectorVest composite. Understand that the first column under current level shows you the actual level of each indicator as of the current day. As you go to the right, it shows a number from 0 to 2, above one being favorable and below one being unfavorable, as to how that indicator is seen by VectorVest. Other sections in the VectorVest views include stocks, which provides information on the top VST stock of the week along with other picks, portfolio, which includes information on VectorVest current model portfolio, information regarding seminars, other events, products, and other miscellaneous information. Let's go back to the All section. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if we change the date to a non-Friday date, such as Monday through Thursday, you will just see one section. So let's go back to September 12th. And you'll notice that under View, it says Timing, and that is the only choice. You can also adjust your text size from extra small to extra large. If you would like the text to be smaller, you can click the small button or extra small. It will make it smaller. And if you'd like it to be larger, you can click large or extra large and the text will be enlarged. You can also search the views. If you would like to find information regarding a search or a market timing call, just go to the top left and click on search views. You'll notice that a sidebar window pops out. Click in the text box and just type in what you would like for your search. If you would like to find information on a search, for example, say Big Gorillas, just type it in. Highlight the button for search all dates if you'd like to search the entire historical views or you can choose a date range. Then click the search button at the bottom. Once the search is completed the re results are displayed on the left hand side in chronological order. 
and once once you find the date that you would like to see just click on it and it will be displayed in the right hand side once your search is completed just close the window by clicking the, the X in the right corner of the slide out bar The next step to getting started with VectorVest Pro Graphics is to open the stock viewer. To open the stock viewer, click the viewers menu on the main navigation bar and then click stock viewer. Stock viewer is an enormous spreadsheet of all the stocks that VectorVest tracks on a given day. In this case, the date is 9-13-2002. But first, let's take a look at the data columns. In the first column, you can see company name. This is, of course, the name of the company. Next is the symbol. After that is the exchange. And VectorVest tracks many exchanges. O stands for over-the-counter. N is for the New York Stock Exchange. A is for the American Exchange. We also track stocks from the Toronto Exchange with a T. There, are, there is an exchange with an I, which, is, which are indices and there are also a B for bulletin board stocks. You will notice that some exchanges have an X next to them. This indicates that the stock has options traded on it. Next is price. This is the closing price for the day indicated in the calendar. After price is change. This is the dollar change from the previous day. Next is percent price change. This is the change from the previous day in price by percentage. Next is value. Value is the intrinsic value indicated by VectorVest based on our proprietary system of valuation. So in this case, APPX is trading for $16.70 a share, but on a current basis, we feel that the stock is worth $21.35 a share. When the stock viewer opens, it automatically opens to the most current date of data. In this case, it's 9-13-2002. If you would like to change this date, just click the down arrow next to the calendar. You can go back or forward one month at a time by using the left or right arrows. If you would like to go back a year at a time, you can do that by clicking on the year. You will get an up or down arrow. And for example, if I would like to go back to January 5th, 1996, I'll click my down arrow. Then I'll click on the month twice and select the month. And finally, just select the day. If you don't have our extended database and can't go back this far, you will get a message saying that there is no data for that date. Let's bring it back up to current. Next to the right, there's a check mark next to return all. This is the default and allows you to return all the stocks in the stock viewer on any given day. If you don't need to return the entire 7,600 stocks and would like the stock viewer to operate a little more quickly, you can uncheck this box and just return the top, say, 25 or 50 or 100. If you'd like to change the number, just click your mouse, double click, and type a number, and then click down on the stock viewer, and this will return the top 100 records. If you'd like to return to bringing back all the records, just click return all.
If you would like to see detailed information on a particular stock in a report format, just highlight the stock, then go up to the local toolbar and click the details link. This will bring up the stock's information in a report-like format that can be printed. You could also type in a different symbol if you want to change to another stock. You can change the date and then once you're ready you can print the report. If you would like to see a report on the industry that the stock is in, just click the industry link and another report will come up on the industry. If you would like to see a report on the sector that that industry is in, just click the sector link and that will bring up another report with the sector information. To close these reports, just click the X in the corner of each box. The next thing you can do with the Stock Viewer is sort the data. As I mentioned, the default sort in Stock Viewer is by VST in descending order. But if you would like to see, for example, the safest stocks in the VectorVest system, you may want to sort by RS or relative safety. To do that, very simply, just click on the RS column header. The first time you click a column header, it will always sort in descending order, which means highest values at the top and you can see Walgreen, Johnson & Johnson, Automatic Data, Cisco, WellPoint Health and so on are at the top of the list all companies you know and recognize. And if I would like to see the least safe stocks in the system I just click on RS once again and that will sort it in ascending order or lowest values at the top and you can see quite a difference in these stocks. So it's very simple to sort to get used to the column information that you see here, one of the tools you can use is the stock analysis tool. To use the stock analysis tool, go up to the research menu, click, and then select stock analysis report. I could then type in my stock symbol. A P P X. Click the Get Report link, and this will show me a stock analysis report on all of the information contained within the stock viewer. For example, A P P X has a value of twenty-one dollars and thirty-five cents per share. Value is the foundation of the VectorVest system. It is a measure of what a stock is currently worth and you can read definitions like this on every field contained within the stock viewer. You also notice from within stock viewer that whenever you click a stock the row at the bottom of the screen shows you what industry and sector that stock is in. For example SYY is highlighted on the stock viewer and at the bottom you can see that it is in the retail sector and the food industry group. You can also see the average price, change, value, and so on of the overall industry group. So very quickly you can compare, for example, the relative timing of Cisco, which is 1.57, against the average relative timing of its industry group, which is only 0.86. And you can see that Cisco is leading its industry group in price movement. The next thing you can do with Stock Viewer is to create and display custom fields. Custom fields are a new concept with VectorVest Pro Graphics. And for example, if you would like to sort by a custom field, just click the Advanced Edit Sort button, and this will pop up a window. Click the down arrow under Primary Sort and you will see all the fields available within the stock viewer in addition to other fields which have been created. For example, VST times average volume. This would find all the stocks with a high VST that have a high trading volume. And if you would like to look at this, just click on it. 
decide whether you want to see it in an ascending or descending order, then click OK. The stock viewer is now sorted, as you can see in the top left, by VST times average volume in descending order. And if you would like to see the values in this field, scroll to the far right of the stock viewer and you can see the column with the actual values of VST times average volume. If you would like to sort by a column that's not contained within the stock viewer, just click Edit Sort, and then click the Custom Fields button. This brings up the Custom Field Builder. It will allow you to create a data, data field within VectorVest based on actual data already contained within the database. For example, if you would like to create a field such as relative timing times growth rate and then times average volume, you would first click the fields button and you would find that relative timing which is under the capital appreciation section. Highlight relative timing and then click. And since you're going to be use, using the times function, just click the little asterisk button and that will put the times function in. Next, click fields again. In the next field we're going to add is growth rate. So we'll go back to capital appreciation, go down, click on growth rate, and since we're going to add one more field, we'll click times again. Let's go back to the fields button. And this time we're going to add average volume, which is contained within the price and volume section. Let's go up to the center, highlight, and then click 50-day average volume. Once the field is the way you like it, you can click apply, and it will tell you that the custom field saved successfully. Click OK, and then click finish. And now you will notice you're back to your sort dialog and it automatically put the sort that you just created into the dialog. Then just click OK. Not only will your stock viewer now be sorted by this new field, but the new field will be saved so that you can use it again for sorting and also searching. Let's take our sort back to VST in descending order. The next thing you can do in Stock Viewer is edit or change the layout of the data shown. And to do this, go up to the local toolbar and click the layout link. This will bring up a dialog box which will allow you to do several things. First, you could add or remove fields from your layout. For example, the columns on the left say columns to hide. These are data columns that could be shown that are not currently being shown. On the right hand side are columns to show. These are all the columns being shown currently in the stock viewer in the same order that they're being shown. So for example, if you would like to see stop price right next to the actual price, just highlight stop and then click the move up button until it is just after price and then click OK. This will change your layout and you will notice that stop is right next to price and even if we close the program and come back stop will remain next to price. This is a saved layout now. Let's go back to layouts And if I would want to return to the default layout, as my program came originally, just click the button to restore defaults. And this will move the stop price back to where it originally was. You can also add or remove columns. For example, if you always wanted to see a custom data column, 
for example, relative safety times growth rate, just highlight that field first on the left hand side, then click the Add button. The field will be added to the, far, to the bottom of your list on the right hand side. You can leave it there or you can highlight it and move it up so that you can see it at any point in time. Then click OK. And the field is permanently saved. The next feature is a new feature to VectorVest that we call Quick Test. Quick Test allows you to compare stocks based on percentage increase or decrease over periods of time. And to demonstrate Quick Test, I'm going to go back to an older date. I'm going to go back to 1996. I'm going to go to January and 5th. And what I would like to know is how the top five VST stocks back in 1996 are doing as of current. So to do that, I'm going to highlight the top five stocks by holding down my shift key and then clicking the mouse. Once the stocks are highlighted, click your right mouse button and then click Quick Test. By default, the from date is the date that you're currently at, and the to date is as of current. So this is going to look at the top five stocks from January 5th, 96, and see, and see what their percentage increase or decrease is up to current. So let's quick click the test button. And as you see, if you would have bought these top five stocks, three of them are gainers, two are losers, and overall you'd be up 213.69% as of the current date. You can also sort by the columns such as percentage change price. You can see the biggest winners or the biggest losers at the top or the bottom. You can also customize your dates for quick test to go over any period of time. Once you're, you can also print the quick test and once you're done, just click the close button. And finally, if you need help with Stock Viewer or any other section of the program, you can click the F1 key on your keyboard or you can go up to the main menu and click Help and click Contents. And this will bring up the VectorVest help file. this section we're going to talk about graphs. To access a graph from the home page, just click the graphs icon on the main navigation toolbar and then select stock graph. This will open a screen, an empty graph screen, where now you can type in a symbol if you know it. For example, if we wanted to take a look at Pfizer, PFE, just type in the symbol then click the Get Graph button. Then the graph will load. The first thing that you notice under period is that it, this is currently a one-year graph. This is the default graph in VectorVest currently. It's also in daily frequency, which means each data point is day to day. And this is also considered to be a standard graph. If you wanted to see, for example, a longer term graph in, say, weekly mode, you would first change the period, and we'll go all the way down to all. And this would give you all data. We'll change it to weekly, so each point on the graph will be week to week or Friday to Friday, and then click the Get Graph button again. And now you have all a graph of all the weekly data that VectorVest contains on Pfizer. You can see at the top that the current date is 9.13.02. And anywhere I click on the graph, we'll change that date. 
it will show the date at that point on the graph. If I want to see how far the graph goes back, I'll take my mouse all the way to the left and click at the left edge of the graph and I can see that this graph goes all the way back to June 2nd, 1995 in this case. You can also add or remove parameters from the graph. This is the vector, default vector vest graph which has price, which is the black line, corresponds with the black price dot here in the legend. It has a green line which is the stop price calculated by VectorVest and it also has a red line which is a 20 period moving average and since we're in weekly mode currently that would be a 20 week moving average. But if I would like to add or remove parameters for example if I wanted to take off the stop price and take off the moving average and just see price I would go and uncheck stop and then I would move to the bottom and uncheck MA2. And now we have a line of just price. If we'd rather see open, high, low, close bars than a straight line, we could add OHLC by clicking it. You now have open, high, low, close bars along with price, which means price will join the closes. If you'd like to remove price, just uncheck it. Now since we're looking at five years, it's difficult to see the bars. So one way to be able to see the graph more closely would be to zoom in on the graph. To zoom in on the graph, just take your mouse to the top left of the local toolbar and click Zoom. Go over and choose the area that you would like to zoom in on click and hold your mouse button down and drag the mouse to the right and one of the things that you will notice is at the top of the graph you will see it says zoomed in from one date to another date and it will actually tell you where it's going to zoom in you also notice that it's zooming both the top and the bottom graph individually let go of your mouse and then you can see the graph much more closely you can also click while you're zoomed in draw lines or do anything that you like until you're ready to see the full graph again then you can click undo zoom. If you'd like to see just the top graph with price without anything on the bottom graph just uncheck what's on the bottom graph in this case it's RT. And now you can see just the top graph if you'd like to see the graph larger, just click the little button at the top of the parameters column, which will remove the, remove the parameters column, and you get more left space left to right. And finally, if you want to see the graph even larger, click the resize link at the top of the window. This will remove the local toolbars, and you can see the graph almost entirely full screen and you can still zoom from here. Go back to zoom. You can still zoom from anywhere on the graph and see it, see it in, a, in a large format. To take it back to the normal size, click resize and then to bring the parameter column back, click the button to the right. You will notice on the right hand side that there are only so many columns shown. There are more columns of data as you know included in the stock viewer. You can view or graph all of these columns if you would like. At the bottom of the column list is a button that says edit field list. If you click this button a window will come up that looks very similar to the graph layouts window. And this window will let you add or remove fields from the right hand side. So for example, if you would like to graph CI or comfort index, you can highlight it, add it to the right hand side. You could also move it up or down in the window if you like. 
Then once you have it where you like it, click OK, and it will add it to the right hand side. And if you'd like to graph it, just click on it, and now you have it graphed on the bottom. You can also add, remove, or change moving averages. We have three moving averages to choose from. So for example, if you'd look, like to look at a one and ten week moving average together, since we're in weekly mode, you would change the first moving average, spin it down to one, then add the moving average, change the second moving average to ten, and then add it. And now you have two moving averages on the top graph. One week moving average, of course, is just going to join the closing prices. The second moving average is a 10 week moving average. So this can give you an idea of when the two cross. If you'd like to take CI off the bottom, just uncheck it and bring relative timing back by clicking it. And now you can get an idea if the one and 10 week moving average corresponds with relative timing going above or below one and it matches up pretty closely at this point. At this point, let's go ahead and un unzoom the graph. And if we would like to get back to the default vector vest graph, first we'll show you the next feature called layouts. Just click the layouts link from the local toolbar and on the left hand side you'll see a single layout that's called vector vest layout. This is the default layout that's included with your graphing system. If you'd like to refresh it, just click the right mouse button on it and then click refresh. And this will bring you back to the default vector vest graph. Both period, frequency, graph type, everything will be refreshed to the default graph. You can also save as many graph layouts as you would like. So for example, if you would like to see a graph of say three month daily bars, first change your graph to the way you'd like it. If you would like to add just open high low close bars with nothing else, a quick way to do it would be to right click on OHLC and click View OHLC Only. This will remove everything else from the graph and show just open high low close bars. Next, click the Get Graph link. This will take the period back to three months. And let's say this is the graph you would like to see. Now what you would want to do is save the layout. To do this, go over to the left and click the Save As button. Then type the name that you would like for the layout. I'm going to call it My OHLC. Now, if you want this to be the default graph every time you open graphs, you can check this box. For now, we're going to just click OK. and it lets you know that the layouts have been successfully saved. Click OK. And now you can toggle between the vector vest layout by clicking on it to your new OHLC layout by clicking on it. If you would like the OHLC graph to be your default layout after you create it, click your right mouse button and click Set as Default. Click OK, and you will notice a heavier border around the OHLC icon letting you know that that's currently the default graph. And to test to make sure that it is, let's close graphs. We'll click the X in the top right corner, and let's open graphs back up. Let's type in a symbol and click Get Graph. And you'll notice that it opened up by default to the new layout that you created. Now if you would like to change your layout, again click the Layouts link 
Now to change back to VectorVest layout being the default layout, take your mouse to the left and first click on VectorVest layout and let it load. Then right click your mouse on it and click set as default. Then click OK. Now a second function of the layouts is you can create sp specific layouts and save stock symbols to those layouts. For example, if you wanted to, every time you saw PFE, you wanted to see it with your OHLC layout, all you would have to do is save PFE to that layout. And the way that you would do that is first go to that layout by clicking on it. And since that we, we currently are on PFE as our stock, go to the bottom and click the add button. Once you click add it will ask you to enter a symbol since you're on PFE that symbol is automatically entered although you could type commas and add more stocks if you'd like. But let's click OK and now on the left under save symbols you can see that with the my OHLC layout PFE is locked in to this layout. Now let's close our graph and let's test that theory. Let's open up the graphs back up now you can also graph multiple stocks from the single graph so let's type in more than one symbol separated by commas. I've typed in three different symbols IBM, AOL, then PFE. Now let's click the Get Graph button and it's first going to load IBM and you'll notice that IBM brings up the default vector vest layout. You also notice that whenever we do multiple graphs there's an extra scroll bar on the far right hand side. To scroll down to the next graph, I can click anywhere in the white space below the scroll or down on the bottom arrow. And now it brought up AOL as the next graph and you'll notice that it also loaded with the default VectorVest layout. Now I'm going to go down to PFE. Now you notice that since we went to PFE, it loaded with the My OHLC layout because we saved PFE symbol with that layout. If you want to change that, just go back to layouts highlight the save symbol and click remove. This will remove PFE from that layout and from now on PFE will come up with the default vector vest layout. We've also included better drawing features with ProGraphic 60 graphs. To use them just click drawing and you can just you can draw lines by clicking lines then add. Then just click and hold your mouse button on the graph, draw the line, let go of your mouse and the line will be placed right on your graph. You can also draw arcs, balloons, circles, rectangles, text boxes, or you can remove all items by clicking the bottom selection. Okay. Just remember when you draw things on the graph they will not save with the graph but you can print them or save them as an image. Another type of graph that you can go to is the performance graph. You can go to the performance graph directly or under graph type just click the down arrow and select performance graph. Performance graph measures the relative performance between two stocks, a stock in an industry or sector, against a watch list, against a portfolio, or just about anything else VectorVest has to offer. It goes back, in this case, one year, if data is available that far for the stock, 
zeroes it out, and then measures the percentage change of the price of the stock. And you can see in this case, we have AOL ranked against the industry group diversified companies. And let's go to Stock Viewer. We'll go to Viewers and click Stock Viewer. Anytime you have a list of stocks open, you can always graph a single or multiple list of highlighted stocks. So if you'd like to graph the top eight or ten stocks from the Stock Viewer, go down, hold your Shift key, highlight the stocks that you would like to graph, then go up and click the Graph button. Once the graph is open, you will notice over in the symbols box that all of the symbols for the graphs that, you, that you've brought up are in that box. If you'd like to go to a particular symbol, just click the down arrow and just highlight any symbol that you like and that graph will appear. On the far right hand side, you can also grab the scroll bar and drag it up or down and a little yellow patch will come up to tell you if you were to let go that's the graph that it will come up that will come up so let's let's let go on SYY and then Cisco will load as the graph you can also move your data line around with arrows you can click on the graph and the date line will go top to bottom in this case it's on 61102 and the stock happened to have a hold recommendation at that time if you click the outside arrows, the line will move 10 points at a time. If you click the inside arrows, the line will move one point at a time. And this can be good for getting on a specific data point. Let's close this graph now. And let's look at some of the other types of graphs available. Let's go back to the graphs menu and let's take a look at industry graphs. Industry graphs work exactly like stock graphs but ex except for one difference. You click the drop down arrow, select the industry that you would like to graph and it will come up in the graph. Every other feature works exactly the same. If you'd like to see multiple industry or sector graphs, just go to the industry or sector viewer by closing the graph and go over to the viewers menu and we'll go to industry viewer. Just do the same thing that you did in stock viewer. Highlight a list of industries then click the graph button. Industry graphs work exactly the same way as we talked about with stock graphs. Let's go ahead and close the industry graph. And let's take a look at some of the other types of graphs that are offered. Let's click the graph menu. We've looked at stock graphs. We've looked at industry graph. Sector graphs work exactly the same. And we've seen performance graph. The final graph we're going to look at is the market timing graph. The market timing graph is a graph of the VVC or vector vest composite, which is the arithmetic average of all the stocks currently in our database. We track the movement of the VVC to help us to time the market. Generally speaking, if the VVC moves two weeks in a row in a given direction, it signals a preliminary turn in that direction. This signal is confirmed by another indicator we call the buy to sell ratio. On the right hand side, if we take off MTI by checking it, then we click buy sell ratio. The buy sell ratio is displayed at the bottom of the screen. So if the VVC moves in an upward direction two weeks in a row, then the, MT, then the buy sell ratio goes above one, we can receive a confirmed up signal 
at that point in time. If the opposite happens, then we can receive a confirmed down signal. You may also watch the MTI to get a basic idea of market direction. When the MTI is above one, the market is generally trending in an upward direction. If the MTI is below one, the market is generally trending in a downward direction. You can add or remove parameters just like the other graphs. If you want to see the VVC price by itself without value, which is the blue line, you can uncheck it. If you'd like to add a moving average to the VVC, you can do that by going to the bottom of the screen and clicking on moving average. Since we're in weekly mode, we just added a 10-week moving average to the VVC. You can also zoom, unzoom, print, draw, and also the market timing graph has its own individual layout system separate from the other graphs. This way we can show a longer term market timing graph while also defaulting to a shorter term individual stock graph. The next step in getting started with VectorVest Pro Graphics is to build a watch list. To open watch lists from the VectorVest homepage, place your mouse over the watch list icon on the main toolbar, click, and then click on stock watch lists. Watch lists are just selected stocks that are subsets of the main VectorVest database. They are used to run cascading searches or just to keep an eye on stocks that you own or are interested in. Let's first build a watch list of your stocks. You can build a watch list within any group or create a new group. And let's do that. Let's click the New button and you will be asked if you want, wish to create a new group or watch list. Select New Group. And let's call this group My Watch Lists. Once you've typed the name, just click the Save button. You'll notice that your group is highlighted on the left hand side. To create a watch list in that new group, let's click the New button again, and this time select New Watch List. Let's call this watch list My Stocks. Once you've typed a name, click the OK button. You've now got an empty watch list, so the next thing you would want need to do is to add stocks. If you know the stocks that you would like to add, you would do it right from here. First, click the Add button and a box will come up to type in the symbols that you would like to add. So let's start typing our symbols in. You can separate multiple symbols by a comma and type in as many symbols as you like. Once you're done typing symbols, just click the OK button at the bottom. and now the stocks are added to the watch list. And the first thing that you'll notice is once the watch list is displayed, just like the stock viewer, they're sorted by default in VST by VST in descending order. So the effect that that has is puts the best stocks at the top of the list and the worst stocks at the bottom of the list. And notice in this example that Cisco and Cardinal Health tend to be better stocks with a high relative value, high relative safety, and they also have a buy recommendation. These are the stocks that you do not have to worry about right now. In the middle of your list, you have two stocks that, are, that are, you may want to think about, but they have hold recommendations. One has a VST well above one, the other has a VST of just below one. 
but at the bottom of your list you have two stocks with a poor relative value and poor relative safety and a poor VST and both stocks also have a sell recommendation. These are stocks that you may want to think about just cutting your losses and getting rid of. Another way to add stocks to a watch list is from any other list of stocks. For example from Stock Viewer or from Portfolios or any other place. So let's demonstrate that. First, we're going to go back to Stock Viewer. We're going to go up to the Viewers menu and then click Stock Viewer. And let's say, for example, we would like to add the top 25 stocks by VST to a watch list. All we would have to do is click the right mouse button and about two-thirds the way down the list is, an, is a menu that says Add to Watch List. Click that and another window comes up. And we, what we want to do is create a new watch list within the My Watch Lists group. We could add them to our existing watch list by clicking the plus sign and highlighting My Stocks. But in this case we'd prefer to create a new list so we're just going to highlight the group and you will then later be prompted to enter a name for the new group. Let's, let's click Add Top and we're going to change the number from 10 to 25. Once you have that set, just click OK. Next, enter a name for your watch list. And we'll call it Top 25 VST and click OK. And it seems almost like nothing happened, but those stocks have been added to a new watch list. So let's go take a look at it. Let's go back to the top, click the watch list menu, and click stock watch list. Now, let's open up our group called My Watch List, and then highlight the, the watch list called Top 25 VST. And there you have it. There are the top 25 VST stocks from the stock viewer in your watch list. You also notice on the left hand side there are other groups of watch lists already included with your program. The first group, Best New Highs, as it mentions in the comments box at the bottom, are watch lists of stocks that hit a 52 week price high at some time during the week in which the watch list is dated and if you open the group you'll notice that a new watch list is created every week every Friday of the best new highs. Next we have a group called DJ watch lists. Just click the plus sign and this is this includes three watch lists first of the Dow Jones Industrials, next of the Dow Jones Transportation Stocks, and finally of the Dow Jones Utility Stocks. The next group is the S&P watch list group. This contains watch lists of the S&P 100, S&P 400 mid cap, and the S&P 500. The next group is called special watch lists and currently this contains a watch list of the NASDAQ 100. The next group is called Worst New Lows, and as it mentions in the comments box, Worst New Lows are watch lists of stocks that hit a new 26 week price low at some time during the week in which the watch list is dated. And this, this is a new watch list created every Friday and automatically sent out to your program. The last list is called WOW, which stands for Watch List of Watch Lists. And they are watches of stocks which are being recommended by various popular newsletter writers and other publications. And this watch list is also recreated every Friday. Watch lists are automatically updated every time that you download your data. So you don't have to worry about updating your watch list. They're always current.
The next step in getting started with VectorVest Pro Graphics is to find winning stocks using the Unisearch tool. To open the Unisearch tool, go up to your main menu bar, click Research, then click Unisearch. Unisearch is the most powerful search tool ever created by man. It can run strategies, trends, high lows, deltas on any combination of stocks, industries, or sectors. In short, it can do almost anything you would like to do with a search. On the left hand side, you can see that there are groups already created with searches in them. First, you'll notice that we have strategies separated into various groups. Strategies are searches that look for parameters meeting or stocks meeting criteria over a single day in time. For example, here's a very simple aggressive strategy and if you look over on the right hand side you can see the criteria are stock RS or relative safety less than or equal to one and stock RV or relative value is greater than or equal to one. And this is all going to execute on a given day. In this case, 9-13-2002, unless we change the calendar date. The, the strategies aggressive group shows aggressive strategies for people for short-term trading or people that like to do aggressive, find aggressive stocks. There is a strategies conservative section that finds stocks meeting more conservative criteria. There's a price volume strategy section looking for stocks with various combinations of price and volume. There's also a prudent search strategy category that looks for stocks with prudent criteria. In other words, people who want to have good returns but not take a lot of risk. The next type of search is a trending search. And let's open up the trends new stuff category. And let's look at a very simple trend. Here's a trend called new buys. And a trend is a search looking for stocks meeting a pattern over two or more days. So the new buys trend looks for stocks trending from a day ago being have, not having a buy recommendation, in other words having either a sell or a hold recommendation, to on the current day of the search becoming a buy. So this looks for stocks that were in a downtrend and now are improving and are getting a now, now getting a better rating from the system. Trends can go up to 10, 10 periods in time and you can also do multiple trends over days or weeks. The Unisearch tool can also find stocks hitting new highs or new lows. At the top of the special searches category is a search called ballistic new highs. And you can see the criteria to the right. It looks for stocks with the price hitting a new high over 52 weeks, Friday to Friday. You can also find stocks hitting new lows or new highs or lows over any other period of time. Let's go ahead and close the special searches group. Now, let's take a look at how we can build a new search of your own. First, click the new button and let's first create a new group. Let's call the group My Searches. Once you've typed a name, click Save Group. Next, to create a new search, go back to the New button, click, and then click New Search. And you'll notice what it does is cr clears out the previous search, and you can start building your new search right on screen. So let's go ahead and build a search based on what we've learned already, we would like to have stocks typically with a VST greater than or equal to one. So let's add that as one of our parameters. So you can start under parameter. You do not have to start under selected date other than in special circumstances. 
click the first box under parameter and you'll see a menu of options stocks industries and business sectors the criteria we want to add this time is a stock criteria so we'll go to stocks go across to capital appreciation and then select VST from the list in the operator box click your mouse and we want the VST to be greater than or equal to and then in value click your mouse and since we're going to type in a value click custom value and just type the number one so you've just entered your first criteria if you'd like to see what the results of this very simple search are go up to the top right hand side and click run search and you can see at the bottom right hand side of the screen that this search produced 3,382 records so let's be a little more selective with our search. Let's go to the next one. Now we want to also have safe stocks. So let's add some relative safety to our search. Let's click in the next line under parameter, go to stocks, capital appreciation, and this time select relative safety. In the operator, let's click and again select greater than or equal to and finally in value click your mouse and we're going to type in a custom value again and let's make our custom value 1.25 and let's run our search again Just click the Run Search button. Now you can see that cut our search results all the way down to 323 records found. But let's see what we can do, what else we can do. Let's add another criteria. Let's add growth rate. We want to have stocks, if we're going to hold them any length of time, that have a good growth rate. So let's click the next box under Parameter, go to Stocks, Capital Appreciation, and this time go halfway down and select growth rate and let's make growth rate greater than or equal to 10 percent so we click value custom value and type a 10 we also want would like to look at stocks with a buy recommendation so let's put in another criteria. Let's go to stock, capital appreciation, and this time go down to recommendation. In an operator, this time we're going to choose equals. Then click value, and this time in value a box comes up. And since we want our stocks to be equal to a buy recommendation, we're just going to check off buy and then click OK. And let's run our search again. Now we're down to 116 results from our search. Let's take a look at one other thing. You may decide that you want to look at stocks that pay a dividend. So let's click under the next blank space and parameter. Let's go down to stocks. And this time we're going to go down to dividend analysis. And the best, the best way to be sure a stock not only in, pays a dividend but does a good job of paying a dividend is to go down and select YSG, which is our yield safety growth vector. In an operator, we're going to do greater than or equal to and for value we'll choose one and let's add one more let's say you want to also ensure that your stocks are traded within industry groups that are going up sometimes you can find a stock that's doing well in an industry group that's doing poorly 
So let's ensure that our industry groups are also in an upward direction. So let's put another criteria in. And this time, instead of selecting stocks, we'll select industries. And under industries, we're going to go to relative timing. So we'll go to capital appreciation and go across and select RT. And for operator, we'll select greater than or equal to. Then for value, we'll click, select custom value, and type 1. This will ensure that our industry groups are at level to going in an upward direction. In one last criteria, you may want to make sure that the stocks that you select are stocks that a lot of money managers or professionals are trading. So you may want to filter your results by a watch list of other stocks. For example, you, want to you may want to make sure that your stocks are in a watch list like the S&P 500. So click Parameter, go down to Stocks, and this time instead of a criteria, since we're going to filter our search, by the results of a watch list or the contents of a watch list, let's go across and go down to a selection called Filter By. Under Filter By, we're going to select Watch List. And you can see in this list, you can also filter by exchange, industry group, sector, or even a portfolio. Select Watch List. Next, select Equals for the operator. And let's go to Value watch list and let's go down to S&P watch list and select the S&P 500. Okay, now let's run our search again. We're down to six results and what do we know about our stocks? We know they have a VST of above one, a relative safety of 1.25 or better, a growth rate of 10 percent or better, they're all, they all have a buy recommendation. They all pay a dividend and do a decent job of paying a dividend. They all, have a re, or they all are within industry groups that have a relative timing of one or above. And finally, they're all part of the S&P 500. So you did a lot in just a few simple steps. And of course, you can re, you recognize all these companies very quickly. Let's take a look at a graph of some of these stocks. Hold your shift key down, highlight the group of stocks, and click graph on the local toolbar. And this will just give you a basic overview of some of the stocks that the, that the search has brought back. Finally, if you would like to save this search, go over to the left-hand side, click the Save button, give your search a name, we'll call it My Search, and it's going to save within the highlighted group, which is My Searches. Click OK, highlight the My Searches group, and click OK again and your search is now saved. In this section, we're going to talk about Portfolio Manager. To go to Portfolio Manager, just go to the Portfolios button on the local toolbar and click. Portfolio Manager is designed to keep track of your investment performance. It's also ideal for backtesting purposes. First, let's take a look at how to create a portfolio and enter your current positions. To enter a new portfolio, first, highlight the group that you would like the portfolio to be in, click New, and then click New Portfolio. Type a name for your, for your portfolio and we'll call it My Portfolio. By default, it enters an investment of $100,000.
has a commission type of per trade at 995. You can change any of these values to match reality. Next, click the advance button. Decide whether you want it to be a margin portfolio. To do that, check use margin. Also check include equity and buying power. The default is 50% margin. If you would like your portfolio to stop and tell you when one of your stocks reaches a sell signal, just check this box. On long positions, you can choose to, for the portfolio manager to tell you when a recommendation becomes a sell or a hold anytime it's not a buy, VST, RV, RS, or RT below one, or when a particular percentage gain loss has been reached. You can also choose that criteria to happen over one or more days or weeks. You can do the same with the long position or with the short positions. For this purpose, let's uncheck stop update. On the right hand side, you can choose whether or not you want to account for interest. First is cash interest rate. This is, this is the interest that you receive on cash in your brokerage account. And if you know your actual rate, you can put a more accurate rate in. Also, the margin interest rate. This is the interest rate that you pay on margin that's borrowed. You can also choose, and this is a new feature with ProGraphic 6.0, you can choose to open or close positions at the current day's open, current day's close, next day's open, or the next day's median, which is the default. The ne if you choose the next day's median, it will purchase and close positions at the midpoint between the next day's high and low. Next, you can choose the optimum number of positions that you plan to, to keep in your portfolio, both short and long. And finally, choose the pricing mode. You can price day to day, point to point, week by week, or month by month. For now, let's leave it day to day. Once you have your options set, click the OK button. Now, to enter positions manually, first, go to the upper menu and choose Open Position. Click, then choose whether you want to buy long or sell short. For this example, we'll choose Buy Long. Let's type in the symbol for the stock that we purchased. And let's choose a date for, which when, for when we purchased it. Let's click the Change Date button. And we're going to choose October 22nd, 99. And let's choose Get Price on October 22nd, 99. And this, this is probably not the price that you paid for the stock at the time. If it's not, just type in the actual price. Type in the quantity. This will type in 1,000 shares. If you would rather edit the total cost basis, you can do that also. Once your information is entered, you could click Apply if you want to enter more shares. Otherwise, just click OK. Next, if you want to reprice the stock all the way to current, just choose 9-13-2002 or whatever your current date is, then click the Update button. And you'll notice the stock portfolio is repricing, and finally it's up to date. 9-13-2002, and it shows that this particular position is up 24.44% from the time that you bought it. If you'd like to sell the position, Next, go to Close Position, click Sell Long, choose the date of the sale, the number of shares, then get the price on the sale date. You can also edit the price, then click OK, and this will sell the stock from your portfolio. Next, let's take a look at a backtesting scenario how you could use VectorVest Portfolio Manager to test your ideas. First, let's create a new portfolio. Let's go over and click the New button and click Portfolio. And let's type Backtest. 
as the name. Let's click our advance button and for this test we're going to use margin. Uh, we're not going to manage the cell so we're going to leave that unchecked for time's sake. We're going to account for interest, buy and sell on the next day's median, and we'll leave the pricing mode on day to day. Let's go ahead and click OK. First, what we're going to do is do a concept we call riding the wave. This is a concept where you use a long search to buy good stocks in up markets, sell them when the market turns down, and then employ a short search to find stocks that are dropping in the down markets. First, we're going to start on October 22, 1999. This is a point in time where VectorVest called an upturn in the market. So to buy stocks in from the results of a search, instead of buying in manually, we're going to click the button, Buy from Search. So let's click. Th Next, we need to select a search to use. We're going to go over, click the plus sign next to Special Searches, and we're going to choose Big Gorillas on the NASDAQ 100. This is a search that finds stocks with an average volume of greater than or equal to two and a half million shares, stocks that have either a buy or a hold recommendation, and that are part of the NASDAQ 100. Next, we're going to select our date. We go to the calendar, click the down arrow, and let's take it first back to 1999. Next, click the month, and select October, and then select the 22nd. We're going to spend all available funds on stocks found. We're going to buy stocks at the next day's median price, and we're going to buy odd lots. So let's go ahead and click buy stocks. Since we specified 10, you'll notice that it bought the top 10 stocks based on the Big Gorilla search criteria. So what happened is it took the $200,000 available with margin, found the top 10 stocks, and broke the money up relatively evenly between the stocks. So you can see the cost basis is just under $20,000 for each position. The next thing we're going to do in our riding the wave concept is to reprice this portfolio forward to a point where VectorVest called a downturn in the market. And this next happened on March 17, 2000. So let's take the calendar underneath the update button, take it to March 17, 2000, and once your date is set, click the update button. And you can see in this first wave, in about six months, we're up 154%. At this point, the market is turned down, so we're going to get out of long positions and we're going to establish short positions. To do this, we're going to go up, click the Close Position menu, and cl click Close All Positions. At the next day's mean, so let's click OK. Now all the positions are gone. And since we sold it the next day's mean, you, you'll notice that our percentage even went up from where it was before. Now at 317, we're going to establish short positions. To do this, we're going to click Short from Search. Next, we need to choose a search from our menu. We're going to close the special searches. And we're going to go down to our speculative group. we're going to select a search called Stinky Stocks to Sell Short. You'll notice on the right hand side we now have a total of $561,000 in funds to spend. We're going to sell the top 10 stocks at the next day's median and it already knows the date that we're going to sell on. So go ahead and click the Short Stocks button 
it found the top 10 stocks meeting the requirements of the short search and you'll notice the cost basis is about $56,000 in each position. Next we're going to go to our next date where VectorVest called an upturn which is 6-2-2000. So let's change our calendar under update. Let's go to June 2nd, 2000, then click the update button. And you can see a tremendous difference in performance. If you'd like to see what each individual position did, just go to the bottom of the screen, and scroll to the right, and you can see the return on investment for each position. And if you'd like to rank them, take your mouse up to the top of the column, and click and now you can see your biggest winner was Axis HAXS Health Axis Inc which is 71.56 percent Ask Jeeves was 70 percent and so on and your, your smallest performer was Amazon.com at 21 percent but now we're at our end date so we want to go ahead and close our short positions to do this we go up and click the close position menu and then click cover all shorts. Click the OK button and click yes. Next, we're ready to go long on 62000. So to continue with our long positions, we just go to buy from search. You'll notice that it remembered the search you were using, big gorillas on the Nasdaq 100. It knows how much in funds that we have to spend. It remembers that we're buying the top 10 stocks at the next day's median price. And it also knows the date that we want to buy on. So all that you have to do is go ahead and click Buy Stocks. Now the next down wave started on 7-28-2000. So we're going to change our date under Update to July 28th. Once you have your date selected, just click the update button. In this wave we stayed about even, but we're still doing all right, so let's go ahead and close our short or close our long positions. So let's go up to the top, click close position and close all positions click yes and click yes now we're at 728 2000 and this is a point where where we call it a downturn in the market so now we're going to go short again and you'll notice we're just repeating what we've done before it remembers our search stinky stocks to sell short all of our settings so just click short stocks Here's our top 10 stocks. Our next up wave started on 8-18-2000, so just click your calendar. Go to August 18th, then click the Update button. And you can see our portfolio is up quite a bit. Now we want to cover our short positions, so click Close Position. Cover all, close all positions, click OK, then click Yes. Now we're updated to 8-18-2000, and at that point we called an upturn in the market. So again, we're going to buy from search, then click Buy Stocks, And now we're going to take our portfolio to 982000, which is the next downturn. Then click the update button. At this point, since we're at 982000, and which is the beginning of a downturn, we're going to sell off our long positions. So go up and click close position, and then click close all positions. And click OK and click yes. 
Since we're in a down wave, we want to sell short. So let's go up and click short from search. And what we're going to do is just click short stocks. And this is going to short the top 10, 10 stocks from our, from our short search. Our next upturn was on December 22, 2000. So we're going to take our date forward about six months to December 22, 2000, then click our update button. This was a major downturn in the market, which reflects in our portfolio value. We're at over 1,097% at this point. Now we're going to go ahead and cover our short positions. Let's go back to close position and click close all positions. Click OK, then yes. At this point, we have an upturn in the market at 1222. So we're going to buy long from our search. Click buy stocks. And we're going to take this forward to February 21st, 2001. Then click our update button. Now that we're at February 21st, 2001, we have another down wave, so we're going to go ahead and close position, close all positions, click OK, click Yes, and we're going to go short once again. Let's click short from search, click short stocks. Our next upturn date is 41201. So let's take our portfolio forward two more months to 412 and click update. Nice rise in the portfolio we're at 1598%. Let's go ahead and close our positions. Let's cover all of our shorts. Click OK and yes. We're at 4.1201, which was an upturn in the market. So let's buy from search. Let's click the buy stocks button. And now let's set our reprice date to June 1st, 01. and then click the update button. We're now up to 1,976 percent. Let's close our long positions. Click close all positions. OK and yes. And now we're going to sell short once again. Let's click short from search. Click short stocks. And our next upturn occurred on October 5th, 2001. Let's click our down arrow, go forward to October, click the fifth, and now click the update button. Now we're at 4,810 percent. Let's close our positions. Click close all positions. Click OK and click Yes. We'll end our riding the wave scenario there for time's sake, but you can continue this on by reading in the VectorVest views and finding the rest of the market timing dates and finish this out. Once again, my name is Don Payton, and on behalf of VectorVest, I would like to thank you for purchasing VectorVest Pro Graphics. 
If you need further help, our hours, hours of operation are 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Our phone number is 704-895-4095. Please call our product support department and they're, they're there to help you anytime that you need. Again, thank you and good luck in your investing.